Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage, insights for personal wholeness for spirit, soul, and body. I'm a psychologist in private practice. I treat adults. However, this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Today, we're going to be talking about how to cultivate your spirit, and I'm trying something a little different. I have a guest today, and this is a video podcast. So if you're on Spotify, you'll be able to see the video. If you're on other platforms, you probably will just get the audio. This might be in two installments, so here's part one. So today we're going to be talking about how to cultivate your spirit. I have a guest with me. I'm going to introduce him in a minute. And hopefully we're going to answer four questions for you today. And my guest is going to help me. What exactly right. What exactly right. is your spirit and how is it different from your soul? Is there more than one spiritual realm? How do you worship from your spirit? And why is that important? And how do you know what is God and what is some kind of spiritual counterfeit? So my guest today is Vince Didato. He is the author of Awakening to the Goodness of God, which you can find on Amazon. He's a marriage and family therapist. He's the founder of the Didato Counseling Service in Worcester, Ohio, a public speaker, a licensed pastor, but most importantly, he's my brother. He has been with me in a couple of YouTube videos that you can find. And also he's done several podcasts with me. We did several together towards the beginning of 2022, looking at transitions and the power of God. So since Vince is a pastor and since a lot of times he adds a dimension that I, I don't always have the theological basis to explain, or I want to make sure it's explained right, that Vince can do that for us. So welcome today, Vince. Thank you, Tony. And I think you do just as good of a job explaining these theological principles as I do. Well, thank you. I don't know if that's <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the first thing is what exactly is the spirit and how is it different from the soul? So Vince, I've explained a number of times body, soul, and spirit. Sure. So why don't you explain it briefly and I'll add anything that I want to say about it. Okay. So especially in the Old Testament, the, the old Hebrew way of doing life was that we were a triune but one person being so our body soul and spirit were all created to operate together so our body obviously that's everything that we can see and touch that operates day to day moving around seeing hearing smelling tasting touching eating all of those things our appetites i like to explain it as Hey, that's a good way too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the soul is connected to uh, your mind. So your thinking, uh, your reason, your logic, your emotions, which of course the main ones are mad, sad, glad, afraid. Uh, but of course we as therapists, Tony, know that there's like about a hundred of them that some describe, but it's all those expressions of what you can feel Mm -hmm. So there's your mind, your emotions, and your will. So your will is the choices that you make in decision about what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what seems best, what seems most expedient, what delights you the most. There's so many factors and motives behind what just determine our will and the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. But our soul is that combination of those three working together, our mind, our emotions, and our will. And then I, our spirit. Go ahead, Tony. I include also our relational needs in the soul. 
Okay. Okay. I think that's a good thing because that's where they would be. Uh, then the last thing is the spirit. What I like is in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, I believe it's verse nine, God is called the father of spirits. So regardless of where you came from, who your mother is, who your father is, what nation, what culture, what your ethnicity is, God is called the father of spirits. So the spirit part of us was created in the heart of God and placed into a, a living embryo to make us a living soul at the beginning of our human and physical existence. But it's good to know the scripture calls him the father of spirits. Okay. And so the Bible tells us that our spirits are alive or dead, that just because God created us with the spirit doesn't mean your spirit is alive. It becomes alive. I like to say fully alive. When we invite Jesus to be our savior, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit then indwells our spirit. Yes. And then from that overflow of the Holy Spirit, turning the light on in our spirit, then we are able to engage with God. So it's different from our intellect. We can learn things about yes, God. It is. We uh -huh. can believe things about God, but the spirit is really what connects us to the Lord in heaven. Yeah. And Tony, two other, th those are really good principles and two scripture verses that would kind of fit with what you just said. In Ecclesiastes chapter three, I believe it's verse 12. It might be 11, but it says he places, <clears throat> excuse me, he places eternity in our heart. So that living eternal part that God put into us, he places that eternity into our heart. And the other thing is in Psalm 18, David wrote, Lord, you are my lamp that keeps burning, that turns my darkness into light. Mm -hmm. So it is that lamp, it is that light that is the spirit part of our triune being. Okay. So technically speaking, to operate from the spirit, from the light that God has placed in us through the Holy Spirit when we invite Jesus to be our savior. To operate in that, you have to go through Jesus Christ. I would agree you have to. Because Jesus yeah. said, I am the light of the world. Huh. And I am the way, the truth, and the light. The light. Yes. So, yeah. so anything else that is called spirituality and there's a lot of things that go into that bucket that that is not necessarily from god it may be spiritual but yes. it's not necessarily from god and so i think it's good to know we have a a body a soul and a spirit the spirit is different from our thoughts and emotions and yes. then there are things we need to know about the spiritual realm. So I would like you to explain that, the, is there more than one spiritual realm? Hmm. So this is very interesting. And most of us, if we've had any background as a Christian, we believe in a heaven and we believe in an earth. And everyone would say, those are not the same places. We are not. <laughs> We are not living in heaven right now. Agreed. So the, the scripture refers to the earth as the first heaven. So you can think of it as the place where our senses determine, uh, the environment determines what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, with what we touch, are all things that our physical senses can determine and experience. So that's the first heaven, where we live, where we go to work, the people that we see. And I think most people can understand that. We might call it the earth. We're here on the earth. The scripture could refer to that as the first heaven. Okay. So that's where our body and our soul lives in the yes. first heaven with people, with the physical, visible realm. Yes. And, and Paul referred to that in, in Philippians 1 as saying, hey, I desire to be absent from my body and to be present with the Lord. 
And the Lord lives in the third heaven. So I'm going to skip the second for right now and think of the third heaven is the one that when you think of Jesus now is seated by the Father in heaven and the glory of God rules and the angels are around his throne and there's a uh, emerald rainbow around the throne and there's thunder and there's lightning and there's a glassy sea and the seven spirits of Holy Spirit, the Bible says in Revelation chapter four there. So all the glorious things that you can think of of heaven where there's no disease and everybody's well, and everybody gets along, and the fullness of the light and glory of God is experienced by everyone. And there's no evil, and there's no disease, all of those things. That's the third heaven where God dwells. Okay. It also says there's no tears, there's no crying. Eric Hooray! Clapton, Eric Clapton did that song, Tears in Heaven, There's No Tears in Heaven, and that is doctrinally <laughs> correct. That's very okay. good. Okay. Yes, that's right. And so when Jesus was in the first heaven, when he came to earth, and the disciples said, teach us to pray, one of the things he said was, and Lord, let your kingdom come and your will be done here on the earth as it is in heaven. So what he was saying is, hey, call that third heaven and all the great, wonderful blessings and securities and healings and peace of the third heaven call it down to the first heaven that it shows up here mm. yeah in the in the heaven the first heaven where jesus dwells everybody does what they're supposed to there's right. no chaos there's no stress there's no rebellion there's no fake news there's like <laughs> it's it's truth it's order it's peace there's yeah. harmony, harmony between, well, the river of life and the vegetation and the trees with the, yeah, with the healing for the nations. It's yeah. no pesticides. Everything is peaceful, orderly in the way God intended it to be. What you're describing, I think, if if Revelation has a chapter twenty two, the last one. If you just start reading the beginning of that chapter, what Tony was just describing, like how wonderful it is, that's where you'll find it. Okay. So we haven't talked about the second heaven yet. No. That's not so, the happy part. That's not the happy part. So the second heaven is the spiritual realm where wars are taking place. In 1 John chapter 5, it says the whole world is under the control of the evil one. In fact, Jesus even had to battle Satan, the devil, whatever term you want to use, when he was on the earth, he had to battle him. And that's in, is it Mark chapter 4? It's in Matthew 4, and it might be in Mark 4 also, because they're around, they both carry a similar sort of account of that, okay. I believe. That's when he so, was tempted in the desert. That, that's right. And most of you know that story where the devil said, hey, turn these rocks into bread. And hey, if you bow down and worship me, I'll let you have the whole earth. Well, Satan could do that because he had authority over the earth because man had sinned and given the authority back. Yeah. So so Jesus was came back to give man back the authority so that we could have these blessings. We could have this fellowship. We could do what he said to the disciples. Hey, ask the kingdom of heaven to come to the earth. But in the second heaven now is where there's the battle between Satan and the Bible would teach a third of all the angels that are now we call demons because they have aligned with the devil. They are fighting God and God's purposes. They can be, I read one book, Tony, where it said these demons are like puppeteers. And from that second heaven, what they do is they affect how people think, you know, like when we were talking about our minds, they can affect how people feel, our emotions, and they can affect the way that people make decisions, their will. So they are working to uh, convince people that the way to think and feel and to behave is very much in a 
Do what brings you the most control. Do what brings you the most comfort. Do what brings you the most immediate satisfaction and gratification and be better than other people. And uh, might makes right, like all of these sorts of things that don't want to have anything to do with God. Right. So in the second heaven is where we feel oppressed. Mm -hmm. We feel uh, tempted. We feel discouraged. We feel like we're in trials. We feel like we're walking through mud. Uh, we can't at times get our bearings as to what's true or not, like we're confused. So in that second realm, in that second heaven, between where God rules and reigns and where we live, there is a war going on every moment. It never stops. It's always going on. Okay. So the good news is when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have a way to bypass all of that crap and, <laughs> and to position yourself through your spirit Yes. into the thinking that is consistent with truth, God's truth, with the emotions that are consistent with peace, uh, that our bodies might even get some kind of healing or at least yeah. get some relief from pain when we are at, in our position in the heavenly places. It says we're seated in the heavenlies. It says that now. Yes, it's it not does. after we die, it's now. So the trick is as much as you can to live out of your spirit yes. and, and your emotions matter, your thoughts matter, your body yes. matters. God created all of that. All of that is good, but, yes. we, but we want it to be energized by our spirits. Yes. So how do you, Vince, position yourself on a daily basis? to draw from your spirit, to draw from the Holy Spirit, to position yourself in that heavenly realm, the first heaven, and not be constantly pressed by the second heaven or the chaos in the first heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very good. And Tony, I really liked how you explained that, that people can understand. So if we're here, and there's warfare all around us, but there's a third heaven here, but by our spirit, we can operate from here. And so people are like, well, how do you do that? Like, right. how do you get there? And, and that's what you're gonna explain. Well, I'm gonna try <laughs> to do that, yeah. So I like what you said, you quoted a verse in Ephesians chapter two that says, we are seated in the heavenly realms in Christ. So obviously, no, we're not. Here we are. But because the Lord is the father of spirits and placed his spirit in us and it has lit up, that eternity has come alive. Paul was able to say, I was taken up in the spirit. I saw things in my spirit. I entered the heavenly realm. Ezekiel did that. Jesus did that. Like there's a number of places scripturally where people had their bodies were living on the earth. But they had an experience in their spirit where they were taken up into the heavenly realm. Okay. So let me so, give an example. It's not like a perfect example. But right now sure. I'm sitting in my office. Yes. But I am also interacting with you in, I don't know, the Internet someplace. <laughs> so I'm in both places. <laughs> yes, I'm you still, are. I'm still in my body. But I'm having an encounter with you that is not limited to this physical space I'm sitting in. That's awesome. That is a great example. It just that is a great example. Thank you, excellent. Jesus. <laughs> yes. Okay. So when the scripture says Jesus now, because of the sacrifice that he made, and he is now seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly places, it says we also now in our spirits can be seated in that heavenly realm in Ephesians chapter 2. That's why in Ephesians chapter one, it says he has now blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Like they are available to us right now. Right now. Right now. So 
I'm not going to go through a lot of them, but my favorite ones are, it says now, because we're seated there, we have an agreement with the Lord of life, like incredible life and peace and a love that grounds us and roots us in our identity. So those are, those are like my very favorite blessings, which now I can have when my spirit is in fellowship in the heavenly realm. And this now, is you why it's so important to have that daily time, because it's not yes, just it adding <laughs> to our intellect. It is strengthening our spirit and connecting us with our power source. It's not, we can't have enough power. All no, by we ourselves. can't. No, we can't. I absolutely agree with that. So I want to be like really practical and say, there's lots of Bible stories about people who were really walking with God and then they like pooped out. So whatever they were walking in, in the spirit realm, they got so overwhelmed that they pooped out. You mean so this I just took wanted, over? Yeah. So like yeah. Jonah, he just wanted to die at one point. Elijah said, I can't do this anymore. Take me out of here. John the Baptist said, I'm about ready to give up, Jesus. Maybe you weren't the right one. Yeah. I just want everybody to know this is a challenge. And it's not like Tony and I walk in this perfectly or we've got this all figured out. What we want to say is this is a battle. This is a challenge because the second heaven is always fighting against us. Okay. And what's the chapter in Ephesians that talks about all the spiritual warfare? Is that chapter six? It is chapter six, yeah. Okay. So remember, when you're feeling nervous, dread, worry, hopeless, your soul has taken over and your spirit is getting yeah. drowned out by your soul. So it's real, but try not to pay too much attention to it. And that's where you need somebody like my brother mm -hmm. and I, Vince. We talk to each other. We text each other. It's like, okay, today... I might text, I'm in a crappy yeah. mood today. Yeah. I am in a, you know, and so he knows to pray for me. I don't have to explain it. And no. I also then do what I need to do to That's start right. getting my spirit busy, connecting with the Lord, getting still before the Lord, playing uh, quiet worship music. I have things that seem to settle me down and help me connect with the Lord again, where I'm not living out of my soul and really being energized by my spirit. Yes. Can you tell us some more about how you do that? Sure. Uh, I wanted to say when, when a person first wakes up, because I try to do this within the first 15, 10 to 15 minutes after I get my breakfast and coffee, that's when I want to get into the heavenly realm. So if I didn't sleep well, let's say I had bad dreams. Uh, let's say my busy brain is just going, 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 and I'm having a hard time slowing it down. Uh, let's say I start thinking about the schedule that I have that day. Um, or if um, I just feel like I don't want to get out of bed, I feel like fatigued or heavy. So these are all things that the second realm wants to just try to discourage me and say, you can't do this today. This is going to be too hard. Like, why don't you just skip it and go do something else? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to push through. So the first thing is I have to make a commitment to say, it doesn't matter how I'm feeling. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stay focused and I'm going to go into that time of being in the heavenly realm. Now, once I make that decision and once I'm ready to do that, I've realized, Tony, some days quiet music helps me and other days I have to put loud music on. Mm -hmm. So I want to find something when I first start. I think you've talked about this before where I'm worshiping the Lord. So I find some song that is a worship song to the Lord, whether it's quiet and meditative or whether it's loud and joyful and full of praise. If that doesn't work, I can also quote certain scripture, like these ones we were quoting in Ephesians 1 and 2, like, I am seated in that heavenly realm. Okay. I have a place prepared for me. 
I have access to every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. I can boldly and confidently come into that place in the spirit, not because I feel wonderful or because I'm so great, but because Jesus secured this for me. Okay. And so, I want to make a comment here. Yeah. So I don't want people to think that everything negative comes from that second heaven. The soul is pretty messy all by itself. <laughs> and so maybe some Very of you good. remember Flip Wilson who used to say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> it's like, no, the devil didn't make you. There was something inside of you that wanted to do it. And the devil said, go ahead. And you said, that's a good idea. We have to agree with whatever that other stuff is. And I talked about that in the podcast, Deliver Us From Evil. Very um, good. So I just want to clarify, don't blame the devil for everything. I hear that all the time in my office. Maybe you do too. There's plenty of mess in our own souls. So... If the soul is taking over, we don't have to figure out, is it me or is it the second heaven? Just do what you need to do and get into that spiritual realm. You don't have to dissect it. Very good. Yes, that's that's a very good point, Tony. It can be within ourselves. Absolutely. I think in Jeremiah, it says the heart is exceedingly wicked. Who can understand it? We have so many things within ourselves that are still getting worked out that can interfere also. That's a very good reminder. Okay. Uh, I also wanted to say sometimes then I try just starting. I just talk to God. I start talking to him about how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, what's going on in my mind right now, how much I love him and appreciate that I have access to him. So any or all of these things from day to day may be things that I attempt to use or do use to enter into that heavenly realm. So I hope you enjoyed this video podcast. I really enjoyed doing it. I'm just going to mention a few resources for you in case you want to study this further. The podcast on harnessing the power of the spirit that I posted on May 21st of 2023 would give you some additional ideas. Also, I've posted some bonus videos on Spotify recently, Strengthening Your Spirit, I posted on February 8th of 2023. Understanding Body, Soul, and Spirit was a presentation I did, posted as a bonus video on 530 of 2023. And on Spotify, these play as videos. If you're using another platform, then it will just play as um, audio. So I want to pray a blessing for us. So Lord, we just invite your presence now. We pray that you would speak clearly to each listener, encourage them, build their faith, draw them closer and closer to your side, that they would sense your presence, that they would sense your voice in their spirit when they read the Bible and that you would steer them towards people that will help them grow and walk in the truth. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend, leave some comments. I'd love to know what you think. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye.